हेलो स्टूडेंट्स प्लीज सब्सक्राइब द चैनल ड्रॉप अ लाइक शेयर एंड कमेंट दिस इज एक्सरसाइज नंबर 11 एंड 12 ऑफ द प्रोग्रेसिव मंथली मैगजीन अगस्त 2022 ऑन द स्पीड ऑफ 100 वर्ड्स पर मिनट स्टार्ट ऑल द ऑनरेबल मेंबर्स हैव बीन सप्लाइड विद कॉपीज ऑफ दिस डिक्लेरेशन एंड सो आई शैल नॉट रीड इट over again i shall merely point out very briefly some salient features of this declaration it is a short and simple document in four paragraphs the first paragraph it will be noticed deals with the present position in law it refers to the british commonwealth of nations and to the fact that the people in this commonwealth owe a common allegiance to the crown that in law in the present position the next paragraph of this declaration states that the government of india have informed the governments of the other commonwealth countries that india is soon going to be a sovereign independent republic further that they desire to continue her full membership of the commonwealth of nations accepting the king as a symbol of the free association the third paragraph says that the other commonwealth countries accept this and the fourth paragraph ends by saying that all these countries remain united as free and equal members of the commonwealth of nations you will notice that while in the first paragraph this is referred to as the british commonwealth of nations in the subsequent paragraph it is referred to only as the commonwealth of nations further you will notice that while in the first paragraph there is the question of allegiance to the crown which exists at present this question does not arise later because india by becoming a republic goes outside the crown area completely there is a reference in connection with the commonwealth to the king as the symbol of that association observe that the reference is to the king and not to the crown it is a small matter but it has a certain significance but the point is this that in so far as the republic of india is concerned her constitution and her working are concerned she has nothing to do with any external authority and none of her subjects owe any allegiance to the king or any other external authority the republic may agree to associate herself with certain other countries that happen to be monarchies or whatever they choose to be this declaration states that this new republic of india completely sovereign and owing no allegiance to the king as the other commonwealth countries do o will be a full member of the commonwealth i am placing the declaration before this honorable house for its approval beyond this approval there is no question of any law being framed in accordance with it there is no law behind the commonwealth it has not even the formality which normally accompanies treaties it is an agreement by free will to be terminated by free will therefore there will be no further legislation or law if the house approves of this in this particular declaration nothing very much is said about the position of the king 
except that he will be a symbol. It has been made perfectly clear that the king has no functions at all. He has been made perfectly clear that the king has no functions at all. He has a certain status. The commonwealth itself, as such, is not a body. If I may say so, it has no organization through which to function and the king also can have no functions. Now, some consequences flow from this. Apart from certain friendly approaches to one another, Apart from a desire to cooperate, which will always be conditioned by each party deciding on the measure of cooperation and following its own policy, there is no obligation. There is hardly any obligation in the nature of commitments. But an attempt has been made to produce something which is entirely novel and I can very well understand lawyers on the one hand feeling somewhat uncomfortable about a thing for which they can find no precedent or parallel. There may also be others who feel that behind this there may be something which they cannot quite understand something risky, something dangerous, because the thing is so simple on the face of it. That kind of difficulty may arise in people's minds. What I have stated elsewhere, I should like to repeat. There is absolutely nothing behind this except what is placed before this house. I might clear up one or two matters which are not mentioned in his declaration. One of these, as I have said, is that the king has no functions at all. This was cleared up in the course of our proceedings. It has no doubt been recorded in the minutes of the conference in London. Another point was that one of the objects of this kind of Commonwealth Association is now to create a status which is something between being completely foreign and being of one nationality. Obviously, the Commonwealth countries belong to different nations. They are different nationalities. Normally, either you have a common nationality or you are foreign. There is no intermediate stage. Up till now, in this Commonwealth or the British Commonwealth of Nations, there was a binding link which was allegiance to the king.